Hey guys, just want to check something before um, I continue on. So I'm going to you see me moving around just a little bit. I've got to make sure that everything is working and move. there we go. Awesome. I don't know whether you could hear that or not. It's a way I can check and make sure everybody is hearing sound is to turn on another thing. And if I can hear it through my ears, then I know that um, it's not at my end. <laughs> so good afternoon again. Yesterday, spectacularly beautiful day. Today, it sucks here. It is cold. It is windy. It is raining off and on. And it's just... I, start, I, I came on to this and I thought, you know what, the one thing I'm going to share right away is I'm feeling very frazzled right now and that doesn't happen very often for me. But one of the things that I have learned to be able to do is recognize that and say, okay, what do I, what do I need to do and what was it that caused that? And literally, it's the weather. As ridiculous as that is, I just locked myself out of the house. So I had to come in through a very contortionist way to get in here because the keys are in the the keys are in the house i'm trying to order something online uh something that should have taken me like five minutes and it's taken me half an hour and that's my fault that's sloppy panning that's not making a quick decision on what i wanted so and all that brought me to here so literally that's what i do with my dogs it, you you guys have heard me i call it woosa it's that taking those deep breaths and just kind of go, okay, I want to share some good information for you guys here. So I know some of you have followed me for a long time and some of you haven't, but I'm not your traditional dog, dog training. I don't typically talk about the, what would be called the basics of dog training, because that's not how I train dogs. Actually, it's, a, it's kind of interesting because I've, I've just been kind of following um, a promo that my friend Susan Garrett is is doing and she just went over what are the top five things that you train your dogs and you know people are competent she's got a big 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 following she's been doing this for a whole lot longer than I have in the online space anyway and you know people were saying things like recall number one recall 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 sit stand. and I knew where she was going because we have a very similar philosophy is that that's not what we teach our dogs first we teach our dogs two games and mine obvious mine are extracted from hers because they i found them and they and they worked i choose the choice method i choose my dogs what i'm ca calling a choose again method choose better and that's what they get rewarded on it, and it's from the get-go they're thinking then I work on what she calls and has branded crate games. I do mat games. I do bed games. I do place games. So again, it's it's all about stillness and calmness. That's so. Number one is choice. Number two is place. Number three is I teach them their name. I, you know what? My last two dogs, I have not taught them the come command. And I don't use that word command because that's, that's, I, I don't like that. I don't like that word. I've taught, taught them, and this came to me through agility, that when I call your name, I want you to come sailing into me at full speed and I want you to body check me because I love body check recalls. And yes, I still use that word, but that's the three things. And I won't go into that because that's not the purpose of this, but that, that's why a lot of the things, you just won't see me teaching that. Because here's a little bit of a tangent. One of the things that I've discovered over, over the last um, three or four months of just sort of observing and talking to people and so on is that no matter how many tools there are out there for, let's call it walking, harnesses, collars, um, extra things that you can use, combinations of those things there's got to be well over 150 different tools called between collars and harnesses and leashes that were tote tote designed or or supposed to fix loose leash walking and yet 20 years later 
everybody complains about the fact that they can't get the dogs to walk loose beside beside them or with them. Yeah, because it's not a dog problem and it's not a tool problem. It's a people problem. Anyway, it's because we're so impatient and we lack consistency. And we once we start getting that, then it just comes together like that. So with that, today's topic is, again, it's another thing that I get all the time when I'm um, – when I do surveys, when I ask questions, what's your biggest problem and so on, is people say, my dog is not food motivated. And there's, there's, range, there's ranges of that. Or on the other hand, some people say, I don't like using food to, to, as a reward. And they kind of fit into the same, the same bucket. And one of the things that some people will say is, you know, people who respond to that and they'll say, well, Dogs have to eat. Just use your food. And you guys know that I do use the dog's, the dog's food. They don't, the, kibble is not all they eat. Sometimes their dinner looks just like my dinner. But I do use that because it's a lower value thing. And my dogs, are, all of my different dogs, are quite happy to work for the kibble. So that dogs have to eat. Just use their food does work. I'm not sure whether you can hear the wind outside, but it's crazy right now. But I don't think that that's a solution. I think it makes sense. But if someone just kind of gave you something and kind of like, how oh, hum, that's okay, you're going to get lackadaisical, uninspired work, unless they really, really love it. And so when you ask someone, when they, when they have that, when, when I have someone that says, well, my dog is not food motivated, I always ask them the question, what have you tried? And what do you think people say? I've tried everything. And I don't respond, but my head goes, no, you haven't. You've probably tried two, three, maybe five things, but you absolutely have not tried everything. Because I know. When I go and we have discussions and people say, what are things I can use with my dogs? People haven't even dived into the vegetables yet. They're thinking the traditional, the bot treats, you know, like the zooks or that type of stuff. They haven't investigated rollover, which is, as my students call it, doggy crack. It's raw, raw, uh, raw meat in a, in a compressed form. Um, is it sort of line grade A1 number one? No, it's absolutely not. But it is, it, it, you know, it's reasonably good for them. All the vegetables, all the fruits, all the things that you could create, combination sizes, the cheeses, the, the eggs, all that type of stuff. But they haven't tried those. They just banded their dogs by dogs not food motivated. And there's a reason for why I'm going into this topic. What if what you were doing with your dog, you actually didn't need anything? Not that you need it, but, but your dog was very happy and willing to work without using any food. And you guys have heard me talk a lot on the canine conditioning side, on the fit pause side, and what I'm now calling indoor exercise, is that a lot of the time my dogs are working, they're actually not working for any food. They're working for love and touch and feel. And for you guys that have rescue dogs or dogs that, you know, really are looking for that extra bit of social connection, it's a great opportunity. So here's something I want you to think about. If you took, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to use the, the fit pause equipment as an example, but you can substitute it with something else. Take a 22 inch disc. So you guys know how big 22 inches is. It's about that size. So you can see where my hands are. And it's, it, you know, it's the disc and you've seen the pictures of it, whether it's inflated or whether it's flat or whatever. You could take a pillow, you could take a folded up blanket, you could have anything like that. And you could put it in front of you on the floor and sit there cross-legged or on your knees or sort of slouched over on the side, whatever works. And ask your dog to come up on it or just wait for the dog to come up on it. Because what are they going to do? They want to be with you. They want to do stuff. So the minute that they put their two front feet on it, you could 
pet them. You could massage their back. You could reach over and rub a, rub a muscle. You could uh, do a quick game of touch, touch, pet, touch, pet. You don't always have to be using food because food itself is, is not particularly rewarding. I'm sure an English cocker and then it's like manna from heaven. So it's because there's no desire. So I want you to think about, for those of you guys who know, and, and, and I do want to be really clear, is that what I do in canine conditioning, fit, pause, and so on, is not designed for agility. I have a reference to agility because I've got a long length of experience in that. But what if just doing what you're doing was enough for the dog? Could you do that? Imagine taking the little Ikea stool, the little white one, the $7, 7 or $10 one. It's a little white one. It's about, it's about nine inches high. It's about like that. It's got little green dots on it, two holes on, this, on the side. You can pick it up. What if you could use that and just have the dog step up on it and, again, massage, ear massages. They love ear massages, pats on the head, anything like that rubbing the tail, going from the base of the tail, pulling out like that. And when I say pulling out, just put your hand around the tail and just massage it like that or feathering underneath with your fingers, same, same down the back. What if you could do that? In agility, I'm just reading Mickey. I, I see her. I'm just reading her, reading her comment. Yeah. See, and that's, and that's exactly the way I, I'm, for those of you who can read Mickey's, Mickey's comment, she says that she walked with hers with kibble so they don't see pulling as an option. For those of you that don't know, Mickey has English bull terriers and pulling is potentially it could be flattened on that flattened on the ground they're they're strong 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 so now they understand that there is value for it so starting very early builds builds that so that's really super that's really super super awesome so in agility there are many 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 dogs that simply doing it is so rewarding that they actually have to dial that back that their challenge is cutting that down so that the dog can actually think because they're so riveted by what that could possibly do you know and whether it's the the movement of it over the the whatever it's the same with the field dogs you know that that going out and hunting is so inherently rewarding that they don't need anything else so I want you to think about that is when you're doing an activity and, and we're talking specifically about canine condition here is what if you could do that without using food or alternating, cutting it down, cutting it down by 1% saying, okay, out of four times I'm going to do an exercise, I'm going to do four times with a food reward and one without. Because that's where we, you know, if you're someone who has a dog that isn't, isn't inherently uh, motivated by food, then you have to figure out a way to do it and changing up what you use, but, but not being sucked into the fact that you absolutely have to use food. You can use toys, you can use treats, uh, not treats, you can use tugs, you can use frisbees, you can use balls, you can use, you can use, uh, you know, sort of chase my hand chase my feet. You can use other tricks that they know as the reward for what they're actually doing. So be, cre be creative in, in, that particular, in that particular scenario. So here's the way I like to, here's the way I like to think about it is I like to think that going back to choice, when we're working with our dogs, the dogs are always going to choose something that makes them feel better. 
something that's inherently satisfying both in their body and in their mind. So if you think about us, why do we do something? We do something because it feels good. And that's exactly why the dogs do it. Now, one of the things that I'm going to be doing over the next, in, I think in the next couple of hours, if, if everything sort of cooperates, is I'm going to upload a video to the group that you can have a, a watch. It's about a four minute, it's about a four minute video. It is me and moment starting out with a little bit of um, a little bit of indoor, a little bit of indoor exercise, um, identifying what his physical challenge is right at that particular moment. And then it's a actually literally a massage session, but he's on canine conditioning equipment and he's choosing to drive it. He's actually working and he's relaxing his body out on equipment. There is absolutely no food involved in this entire session. And it gives you a good feeling or a good idea of what is possible and why he chooses to do these things because it makes his body feel great. He absolutely loves it. Now, the other thing, there's one other piece that we're just going to talk about really, really briefly here is if you've got a challenge where your dog is, where, where you really think, you're really believing that your dogs are not food motivated, maybe that's because the reward, the value of the reward and the challenge that you're putting in front of them, is they're just too far apart. There's not enough value in this reward for this challenge. And what we might see as a challenge might be easy for the dog. And what we might see as not a challenge might be incredibly challenging to them. And I see this a lot with my, uh, when I introduce my fit plank to, uh, to people in, in, uh, in workshops and in, on that course and so on is it, is initially the humans all go, oh, it's just a piece of wood with a couple of couple of legs on it. That's nothing. And the dogs go, whoa, that thing, I, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. I, it's just, it's too much of a challenge. There's a, dis, there's a disconnect. And that disconnect also occurs between reward and challenge. So sometimes you need to step back and say, am I asking my dog to do something that I thought was not so much of a challenge, but it actually is a challenge and that the reward at the end is not enough. And so you'll need to know in the hierarchy of rewards, what is your dog's most valuable reward? Now, let me tell you about um, and I'm going to go just a little bit long, to, long today, is I had a student with a very, very high energy Vishlan. That's on, almost like, that's almost like an oxymoron uh, saying, saying that a dog is, uh, a Vishlan is not high energy, but they are, they're, they're hot. I love working with the Vishlas. But I said to her, what is her highest reward? And she said, well, I don't know, it might be this and it might be that. I said, no, what is the thing when you're not in this particular scenario and when you offer it to her, you give her the opportunity to engage with it that literally will almost turn her inside out with enthusiasm. And she said, chasing me. And I said, well, you get better, better get ready for running a lot in this class because if that's her highest reward, then that's what we're going to give her because she had a ch her challenge was staying still. And you guys know that stillness is my one of my key things. She couldn't stay still, but we wanted to reward her with the thing that was the highest value and it wasn't food. Staying still working for food? Nah, nah, not even close. But staying still so she could go and chase her owner and then engage with her was way up here. And it transformed her right away. So that's what I want you to, you guys to think about is think about your, your, your rewarding 
and think about the responses that you're getting to it. If your dog is not, if you don't believe your dog is food motivated, that's probably your problem and not the dog's problem. Yet there are some, people would say the Afghan hounds, and there's proof that you can have an Afghan hound that loves to work for food. There is proof in the world. But I want you to think about what you're actually doing. Are you getting blase, boring uh, engagement with your food? And maybe you need to change it up. Maybe you need to get rid of the food for just, you know, one out of every five sessions, two out of every five sessions of progress. And see, add a toy in instead. See how you can get that engagement, that enthusiasm, the tails that are like my dog's tails. And when you watch this video, you're going to see that the a moment looks like he should be levitating. His tail is going so fast. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the tail gauge. So with that, don't forget, guys, uh, this Friday, Black Friday, we have got a crazy sick promo for you. 24 hours, that's all it is. We're gonna let it, we're gonna release it first thing first thing in the morning. But I wanted to come on, just give you some thoughts on food motivation. Feel free to share this. There is a video going to be on our YouTube channel. If any of these Facebook lives you want to share with someone else, feel free to share them from there. I'm not sure whether you can share them from the group. I will make them public, but again, and again, don't forget that the, um, the Fit Body, Fit Mind Dog monthly membership, our monthly membership, um, where we talk about wellness, you bring some all sorts of different resources in all sorts of different areas, uh, is going to be launching the 9th of December. So watch for that as well. So with that, see you guys later. Bye, Mickey. Take care of those awesome bull terriers.